Bert Oliva's Mastermind Circle. Hello, everyone. And I want to welcome you all, especially the new people, to Mastermind Circle. So you guys ready? Come on, tell me you're ready. You can talk to me, can you? <laughs> well, I'm excited. We're going to have a good time. There's uh, certain things. Let's go through the, the steps of what's going on. For those of you that don't know me, I've been doing seminars for over 21 years at a professional level. I've traveled all over the world, and this is my passion. This is my career, and this is what I love to do. Let me share a video with you, a brief video, to give you more of an idea of what it is that I do and what I've done. Here we go. Hello. My name is Bert Oliva, and I've been speaking at a professional level for over 20 years now. I am the founder of Humanology, the scientific study of human potential. I truly believe that everyone has greatness inside of them. The only person that holds them back is themselves. Bert Oliva is an international orator. He has enchanted audiences all over the world, showing them the power of mind over matter. Because you're conditioned that way, you just don't know it. Bert has a dedicated social media following and an impressive online influence few possess, enabling him to communicate with audiences he has touched near and far. He has met some of the most influential and powerful people in the world. He has also coached highly successful business executives and politicians. So get ready to have an experience you won't soon forget. We have a mission statement, and our mission statement goes like this. And for those of you that have been here, this is our third week, and you've been here, just take a deep breath and say it with me. Can we do that? Let's do that. One, two, three. To create a group of like-minded individuals that support, collaborate, and promote each other, who are willing to share, give, and receive encouragement to grow together mentally, financially, and spiritually. That's the way you create balance in your life, all three, and being able to work with each one of them. Today, we have our special guest. This is where you tell your story. This is a section where we're bringing Anthony. He's our guest today. And he will have five minutes to tell his story. I truly believe that you know everyone has either had a test or a mess in their life. Test is part of a testimony, and mess is part of a message. So you have five minutes to talk about that test or mess in your life, the process of what you went through, and the lesson that you learned. And then at the end, we'll be able to ask, ask some questions. So without further ado, I'm excited. So you ready? Uh, hold on. <laughs> ready. All right, I'm ready. I'm Anthony, Anthony Moore. Uh, my... I guess you could say my trial was uh, a battle with cancer. Uh, I went through just a quick health scare. I want to say it that way. It was more than that. I mean, it was cancer. You know, uh, I spent a couple nights looking up at the ceiling, thinking, "Man, I, am I going to wake up in the morning?" That type of cancer. You know, um, I went into the doctor's office and I thought I had a sinus infection. Uh, where, you know, you have a little drip in the back of your throat. Uh, my primary care doctor, he basically said, hey, I, I'm going to send you to a specialist because all these rounds of antibiotics didn't help, you know. So I went over and took, uh, first I went and got an MRI done on my neck. And then um, I went over to the specialist and he looked down my throat and immediately said, what are you doing tomorrow? And it made me a little nervous, you know. I got a lot of things to do tomorrow, you know. I got a, a bunch of work. I have to, I got responsibilities at home. Uh, it, it was springtime, so I really wasn't doing football. I'm, I'm a football official also, so I wasn't doing football. Um, but I have things to do. And uh, he said, well, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, I need you to check in the hospital tomorrow. Tomorrow. And... Um, we need to do a biopsy because I see a big mass at the base of your tongue. I mean, this is coming from out of nowhere for me. You know, I, I was a heavy guy. I was, uh, I was out of shape, but I was overall healthy. You know, I, I did a lot of running. I, I did, I worked out. Uh, like I said, I was a football official. Um, 
but I was never sick, never even colds. You know, when I, I would have a sore throat every now and then and cough. I used to joke about it every now and then, oh, that might be some cancer, you know, thinking it was funny. And then um, it wasn't funny. <laughs> it wasn't, you know, and, and it, we went about the treatment very aggressively. Um, and I had surgery. They removed um, my juggler vein, a couple of big masses in my neck. Um, they removed half of the base of my tongue. Um, basically, a five centimeter mass. They took the most they could take off of my tongue without my speech being impaired. Actually, they thought my speech would be impaired, but it wasn't. Uh, and it was tough. It was really tough, man. But uh, you, you come out on the other side when you start really thinking about what you have to live for. And that's what I started doing. You know, I, the doctor kept telling me that to get better after this, you have to do some things. You have to make changes in your life. You have to um, really think about being more healthy, um, exercising more. All of those things I I really wasn't doing prior to that, but I sure the hell tried to do it now. You know, I, I want to be here. You know, I want to I want to be with my family, and it was that moment where things start changing for me, right? That that moment, I started paying attention to what I ate. I started to try to exercise more. I tried to eliminate as much stress as possible. You know, life without stress, that's, it's like not life, right? You know, because your, your life happens and there's always going to be some kind of stress or some kind of, something going on in your life. You would want that. And one minute. And I worked hard to eliminate those stresses. I really did. I made big changes, drastic changes in my life, and I continue to make those changes every day. I keep setting goals every day, hit those goals, go to the next goal. You know, that brush with death was enough to set me in this right path and get back on the righteous living. You know, my mom, my grandparents, they raised me to be a good man. So that's what I'm doing within five minutes. It was really powerful, and even though I know your story, every time I hear it, you got me choked up over here. Because <laughs> we take life for granted, man. Things, that, little things, you know, next thing you realize, and especially when you talked about your, your parents and your family. When you talked about your family, that's really what, I think that's your biggest fear. Yeah, yeah, yeah man, and I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> it was, I have a couple of loves in my life, right? And my family is really part of my life, but I love refereeing football. <laughs> I do, man. And that pulled me out on the other side because every day, every day after treatments, you know, I, I used to do radiation every day, chemotherapy every Friday. So daily morning radiation, chemo on Friday, and then get dressed for a football game Friday and go out on the football. And that kept me going every day during football season because I was diagnosed in May, but with all the surgeries and things happening, I mean, they went in and hit me immediately and wanted to get as much of the cancer out of my body before it got through my bloodstream. So there was some time before football season where I was really, really ill, but it just got worse. I mean, and my goal every day at the end of every week was, be healthy enough that you can go on the football field. And that's what I did. I did it every Friday night. It, it scared some guys because some guys couldn't believe it that every I'm coming from chemotherapy. I am still have Band-Aids and stuff on my arms from the IV, and I'm going out and getting on the field and trying to run around and stay positive and keep going. It works. That's good because when we talk today about our topic, it kind of ties into what you're talking about. So what I want to do is before Anthony leaves, is there any questions? I know there's questions. If there's people that want to have any questions, please ask the question right now. What made you not give up? What made me not give up? I, I wanted to live, man. I had a bunch of stuff to live for. You know, I, I spent a bunch of time prior to that going through the motions, you know, just going to work every day, you know, coming home and hanging out. 
going to work the next day, coming home, hanging out, you know, it's going through the motions. And I wasn't done learning. I wasn't done trying to do what I had to do. I wanted to see my little girl grow, you know. It, it, there was big changes that had to happen in my life for it to happen. And I, I had to make them. We have a live question. Uh oh Thank you for sharing your story. Um, it's, I can't tell you or I can't even imagine how difficult it is. And I appreciate that. And I have a question for you. Okay. So you talked about managing stressors in your life and that that was part of the healing process for you. <laughs> With everything you have going on, can you tell me a little bit about how did you go about that? Well, <laughs> the my mate at that time, not my wife, so we can't really go into that. My, at that time, we were in a very toxic relationship. And, um, you know, we, how can you say it nicely? It was toxic. It was just a toxic. So that was like a, a huge burden to just get off my back. You know, we had a huge discussion about it. You know, I, we had been in a relationship so long, you know, in and out of love type thing. But that stress on my head every day was killing me. It, I mean, so that, that number one was to fix home so I can recover. And, and that was, that was the top dog. It's unfortunate to say it because, you know, I, I, I don't uh, wish her any bad or ill will, but man, I, I had to eliminate that stressor. That was number one. And then number two, I had to really get back into exercise, you know, the exercise to get out that extra little um, aggression, stress, just doing that, even if it's just walking, walking for 15, 20 minutes around the block, that helps. It, and it helped me like tremendously. I couldn't stop to think about all the other stuff that's going on because I'm focusing on trying to get my workout. All right, we have one more live questions. We have actually a lot more, but I don't want to take up the entire time. We have one more person that came in next on the feed. Did you have to fight the healthcare system as in doctor's advice? To rest instead of being active, etc., in order to follow your own goals. Not only did I have to fight my doctor, but I had to fight a couple of doctors, a couple of different specialists. One of my doctors, which is the, um, I, I guess he was my primary, he always told me to stay active, to keep going, and I would see him every now and then. I was lucky enough that my primary care doctor was very close to where I live. So, literally, when I left my um, development, I could stop by and see him. And he would check me and make sure I was okay because I was not only recovering from being sick uh, from all the medicines they were giving me, but also the sores that were in my in my throat. I couldn't really eat, so I was losing weight like incredibly fast. Like I, I lost, I think it was eighty pounds in three months. It was just ridiculous. It just like melted off of me. So I got that daily touch base with him and my mom too. I, I, I'll tell y'all the truth, man. My mom hated that I got out there every Friday. She, she would say, I know you love doing that, but you know, you're so, you're so weak. You're sick because there, there was weeks where after I didn't work and I would go through treatments and still after chemotherapy, make sure I went and did some football. So. All right. We have one more live, by the way, even for those of you that are not able to pop in right now, we're going to have questions and answers at the end because we got a whole uh, lesson set up, set up for you guys. So let's do one more live, and then we'll be done with Anthony. Uh, the next person on the feed is... Quick question. Um, you say you kept going, you kept going. Um, I don't want to assume, but uh, what exactly, what's your passion? I know you say that you have a lot to live for, but what exactly your passion? Is your passion uh, make you keep going? Or, and what, what is your passion? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I'm passionate about living. Uh, I'm passionate about getting this message out. You know, um, well, one of the things that my parents taught me, well, my mom instilled in me is just being a leader and being exceptional, being different, being positive. And that message was getting lost if I was gone, you know, and I, I have to get that message out. You know, I, I was fortunate enough to have a daughter late, and it's unfortunate that I can't teach her as much as I want to about who I actually am, who, how I was raised. Uh, I'm, I'm 
grateful that I married my beautiful wife and we have a blended family and I could teach her kids all the great things that my mom and my grandparents and my people around me taught me, you know? So uh, giving that back and showing people, just showing that love, that love that I sat and thought that I was gonna lose, you know? That, that, that was like been my drive. It, it was my drive then and it's been my drive since. All right, Anthony, thank you so much. It was awesome. And uh, it was a pleasure having you on the actual, this is, you're the first one to do the actual 15 minutes. I ain't scared. I'm not scared at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, talk to you soon. I'm going to go ahead and keep moving. If there's anyone that wants to do the next session, which will be in two weeks, and share your story and your successes and failures and how you came out of it, please, all you have to do is raise your hand, and then Valerie will put you on the list, and we'll go from there. We get you prepared. We'll send you an email that tells you exactly what you need to do to get prepared for it and looking forward to it. As long as you're a member, this is what it's all about because this also teaches you how to talk to people online, how to interact. This is the wave of the future. Number one, you're sharing your story with the world. And once you do that, there's a major disconnect of the past and a connect with the new you. So that's better. And number two, you're sharing this with people and your message can change someone's lives and get them in a, in, in an amazing, you know, uh, uh, give them tools and stuff that they didn't think about because they realized that, man, you think my life was bad? Look what this person went through or vice versa. Oh, I'm going through that right now. You never know. And then we do a little bit of critiquing. And overall, I think that he did a great job. I think Anthony, you know, came from the heart with his message. However, I would have done, if I was doing a presentation like that, is use some uh, visuals. I would have used, I've seen some of the pictures that he's shown us before, I would have used that. And I would have used the mask that they had to hold him down on the bed when they were doing the chemo. It was really, really impressive. And just since he's going in that direction, I'm giving him this critique, this information, because he can use this as he starts doing more presentations and seminars and sharing his message. A lot of times using your tangibles are really important. Other than that, he did a great job. I mean, I connected with him. I saw what he was saying. He talked to me. He was looking in my eyes when he was talking to me. And, and that's important because that's what it's all about. So if you want to be a speaker uh, in the next two weeks, because next week we have a special guest. We're doing a, an interview, uh, and it's gonna, I'll tell you more about it later. However, for the next week, no, the following week, we'll have the same thing. And I would like, if you want to be a part of it, just let Valerie know. Raise your hand, and we'll go from there. Sacrifice. Today's topic. The topic for today is sacrifice. And I have a question. What are you willing to give up to live your dream? See, people say, well, do you really have to sacrifice? No matter. I've seen people that are really, really successful, people that are not so successful, all types of people. But every time they do something in their lives, there's always something they're sacrificing. It's just part of the thing. You have to sacrifice something. Something always gives. So the question is, are you willing to give something in order to get what you want? Are you willing to sacrifice something? And a lot of people don't want to. They want to have the good times. They want to travel. They want to party, but they don't want to work. So something has to give. You don't work. You're not going to get those things. So let me go a little further with, with the presentation. Powerful stuff here is looking at this. Let's, let's look what it says here. It says, sacrifice, the act of giving up something that you want to keep, especially in order to get something or do something else. Something that you want to keep, especially something special. This is it. This is what I want. However, I also want to be able to get new things and expand my life. Well, you can't have both. You could work on it. There's a thing called balance. However, I'm going to give you some tools today, tools that you can apply immediately, tools that will help you. But let's look at this topic a little deeper. Let's, let's go on to the next slide. Sacrifice. You want to lose weight. You want to create a new lifestyle change, you have to choose. Are you going to eat the pizza or are you going to eat the apple? You know, you got to have better choices in whatever it is that you're going to eat to, to actually end up with that body that you've always wanted or the body that we used to have when we were younger, right? <laughs> I've heard that before. But that's part of the process. Those are the things that you got to do. The other thing is working out or watching television. A lot of people, I'm going to go to the gym, honey, just, just two more minutes, honey, just, you know, to the next commercial. Next thing you know, you're in front of the TV for three hours. You could have gone to the gym and back, taken a shower in those three hours, and then you would be going towards your goal. So sacrifice. 
You gotta look at it. You gotta have it in front of you and then realize, am I really doing these things? Because everyone can preach. I mean, some of the best preachers in the world are on television at five o'clock in the morning. You follow those people that can practice what they preach. And those are the people you're gonna want them to be your mentors and your, your associates and so forth. Those are, that's where you wanna be. However, if, if, in order to get there, you gotta become one. Career versus job. They're both great. I have a friend of mine that has a job. His job pays him half a million dollars. But he's happy with that. He, doesn't, he tells me the reason he's happy with that job is because he, has, he doesn't have to worry about certain responsibilities. Being that if it was an entrepreneur type of mindset. But other people can make less than that, but they want a career. So what do you want? Career or job? Think about it. And whatever it is, it's right. It's good. But choose one. Don't bounce back and forth because you'll, have, you'll end up with neither. Does that make sense? Here, I got another one. Sleep versus social. Some people sleep way too much and some people are way too social. You know, they're like, I'm always tired. I don't get enough rest. But as soon as you leave work at five o'clock, you go to the closest place, go to happy hour, hang out there to the bar closes. And then so you know, you go to an after hour club and the next day you're going to work all hurt. So what is it? Are you going to be successful or are you not going to be successful? See, people always say, well, you're lucky. Luck does not exist. Luck is when preparation meets opportunity. The more prepared you are, the luckier you're going to be. You want success in your life, you have to go after it. You have to search for it. It's there. It's in front of you. However, sometimes we don't even look at it. That's why you got to make sure. What are you going to sacrifice today to have a better quality of life tomorrow? Think about this. In fact, you should write that down. <laughs> Let's keep going. Work and family. I'm working for my family. Are you? Or are you just working? Because you, 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 know, you love work so much and then you miss out on your family. Or I, I, I don't care so much about work. I need to be around my family. Well, so much that you're not earning a good life. You, you know, you're, you're always complaining about not having money. I was watching this program the other day. I was talking, actually, I was talking to someone the other day and they were telling me about being broke. Growing up, you know, that he would always say, I'm broke, I'm broke, I'm broke. And someone told him, dude, you're not broke. You know, you're not broke. The day that you realize you're not broke because you have so many gifts in you, you have many, many talents, you have many things that you can do, you're not broke. But once you say it enough, it becomes a reality in your life. So again, work versus family. And I'm not trying to compare them, but I want you to look at it. You can have both. I work and I have my family. In fact, I have a thing that I call workation, where I don't believe in vacation and I don't believe in just working. I believe in workations. You go out, you're having a good time. I do a seminar. I do a, 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 a whole weekend seminar at a different place in the world. And next thing you know, I, I bring my family in and then we spend another weekend over there, you know, hanging out and enjoying whatever, wherever we're at. Workation. Do things a little different. Be different. Different people succeed all the time. Time versus money. Time is money. That's why I try to give you as much information as I can, as fast as I can. And the reason for it is to be able to give you the sources, the resource that you need, because I know how valuable your time is. I know how valuable my time is. So instead of being here for two hours, like I do some of my seminars are like eight hours, some of them are 12 hours, you know, and that's live. And hopefully I've seen you in some of them. Some of you have been there. Some of you haven't. One day we will meet at one of these seminars and they're phenomenal. However, I do give you a thousand percent. I know it's not a real number. However, my mom always told me, do a thousand percent. And I give you a hundred percent. When I get on that stage, when I'm in front of this computer or this phone or whatever device I'm talking on you, even when I do my motivational moments, I give it to you with everything I have. My entire, you know, it's, it's, it's just give it all you have. If not, just don't do it. So again, don't sacrifice so much that you lose your balance. So I'm going to give you three, three tools that you can apply as we go. One, schedule a time with your family and friends and especially with yourself. Because we'll go ahead and schedule time with our family and friends. But the most important thing in the world that we forget is the time with us. You time is really important. And you time doesn't have to be two or three hours. It doesn't have to be six hours. It could be a total of a minute. I've told people before, you know, if you're in your automobile, you get home and your home is full of people and it's going to be a very difficult thing for you to actually take some time off because your house maybe doesn't have 10 rooms or whatever the case is. 
and you're there, what do you do? Stay in the car for a minute. Turn off the radio, leave the windows up. If it's too hot, put the windows down and take one minute, take a deep breath and just connect with yourself. You'd be surprised how powerful that tool is. So schedule your time with your family, friends, especially yourself. Another tool I want to use, I want you to I want you to use this week is to unwind, unplug, disconnect. The number one thing you should disconnect from is your phone. This is it. In fact, I am here in front of you, and the first thing I did was I turned my phone off and I put it to the side. Why? Because that way I can engage and get involved with you and give you the tools and instead of being worried about the next social media click is going to be or the next phone call or whatever it is. So just unplug yourself. Do it for a few minutes. Give it a try. At first it's going to feel awkward. But do you remember back in the day when not everyone had a phone? Unplug, disconnect, unwind. You know, go to a jacuzzi, go to the gym, get in the sauna. Do something that you normally don't do for you. And you will see how much faster your goals and your life starts changing. And then the third tool is journal. If you haven't journaled yet, in fact, I'm going to do a session, a lesson. It's coming soon. If you guys want it, also, that's another thing. If you're a member, we have a group in Facebook. It's called Mastermind Group. If, you have a, if you're a member, Please reach out to us. Tell us some of the tools that you want to learn and techniques and so forth. And I will make sure that when I do these presentations, they're more catered to what, the, what you guys want. Because this is really about you guys. But journaling is extremely important. important. Years ago, I was taught how to journal. Have you ever noticed that really successful people, when they're really successful, I'm talking about like successful people, <laughs> you will always see that they have journals. They write things down. They don't want to forget it. But then journaling can also become like your diary. Take notes of what's going on in your life, your emotions, what you're feeling. And you can go back and then recap and realize, you know what? Last year, I wasn't feeling so good. So at the same time, same day, last year, I wasn't doing well. And this year, I'm just doing so much better. So journaling is a massive, massive tool for a lot of things, especially when you're thinking about sacrificing something, you can go back. This is one thing you shouldn't sacrifice is get, get yourself a journal. Get a journal, get involved, start writing things down. And if you don't know how to use a journal yet, like I said, you go to the group, give us, send us some emails and texts and let us know, and we're going to set up a presentation talking about journal and breaking it down how important it is and all these things. So anyways, I just want to thank you guys. You know, it's been awesome. We had a great time. There's a couple of things I want to give you. I have always left everyone with the message of the week, which is, a, and by the way, you can take a screenshot in some of these slides so you can take them with you and, and post them all over the place. That way I remind you what you have to do. Great achievement is usually born of great sacrifice and is never the results of selfishness, Napoleon Hill. This is important. You want to achieve great things? Just don't be selfish and get ready to sacrifice. And you will grow to places that you never thought you can get there. It's amazing. Here I have invitation. For those of you that are new and those of you that have enjoyed the session and you want to be part of the session, just please go to www.mastermind.boa.tv. And there, you, you'll be able to go there. That's the website. It breaks everything down for you. We are meeting every week, every Wednesday from 8 to 9. We usually try to do it less than an hour and be able to connect. Some, some sessions are like this. We, these are called lessons. And then like the one we're having next week is an actual interview. And you get to interview with experts and ask them questions and find out how they did it. And they'll help you with your business and so forth. So it's great. Really recommend it. And, and I'm glad. I'm glad you guys are here. I started this like a dream. I did this for many years all over the world live. I would go to all these events and have to be there. And we started doing this three weeks ago. And we have a large audience in a matter of three weeks. And that lets me know that there's a need for this. And if you know someone that may need something like this, don't hesitate. Let them know. Let them know and let them get involved. Because all it takes is one word, one message, one tool to change your life like you never thought it would change. And next week, we have Orly. Orly is a great friend of mine, and she's a founder of Health and Wellness Network of Commerce. We're doing actually a cruise 
in the Caribbean. We'll talk more about it next week when she's on. And she's an inspirational speaker, and she has a true inspirational story. Very powerful, powerful woman. I saw her make a, you know, her successes, and I saw her make major failures too, and those she will share with you. And it will be a very powerful interview, and I'm looking forward to having her here, and now you guys know who's going to be here next week. So I'm hoping to see you, every single one of you, plus wherever else you invite. So before we finish, I want to get questions and answers. Any questions that you guys may have for me right now, uh, I'll take a couple. I'll take a couple of live ones and a couple of um, questions, and I'll answer and I'll do the best that I can. And uh, looking forward to ending this session on a positive note. Thank you for scheduling time successfully. There's many ways. First of all, in order to schedule things, you need to put them in your calendar. Let's just start with that. A lot of people, they start doing it and then they don't, they get off of it. I, nothing, if you want to meet with me and you want to, you know, we have a coaching session or we have anything. If you want to just have a cup of coffee and you want to set up that schedule, it needs to go into the calendar first. And you get used to it. It has to become a trigger that no matter what, something comes up, it goes on the calendar. And then you listen to the calendar. When the calendar says that you're going to do that, then you go out and do it. However, for whatever reason, you get caught up and you're not able to do it, then you go ahead, open it, and then forward it ahead another 10, 15, 20 minutes as long as you get it done. If it goes off second time, you're not going to do it. So then delete it and stop lying to yourself. That's it's really simple. Scheduling is done by the first step is making sure that it gets to your agenda. If it doesn't get in there and then you don't actually put it in, it's never going to happen. How do you know when you're sacrificing too much? If you have a, a, an idea of something you want to do in your life, you know, and let's say you start at a young age or you started, forget about, let's forget about age. Let's, let's talk about us as human beings. I have a new idea right now today. I started this three weeks ago and I knew that it was going to take a lot of time on my, my, for my schedule because I do a lot of things and I talk to a lot of people and I'm always traveling. And you guys know that you sit online and this is something I've been dying to do. I've been wanting to do. In the process, today I sacrificed. And my family seems to understand because they also know what comes with it. They, they know how important it is to me. Those people that are going to stick by your side, they're going to understand how important it is. And now, every now and then, when you're doing it too much, let's say, let's talk about a year from now. Maybe I'm doing this for a year nonstop, maybe two years or three years down the line. And my wife comes to me and says, you know, Bert, you've done this for three years straight because I'm, I'm, I'm like that. I'll start a project and I won't stop. And, and it'll be three years later, and I'll say, well, honey, why don't we do it together? And, you know, this way they get to know a little bit more about you, and it becomes a different type of show. Or, you know, I, I always involve the person that are around me, the people that love me, to make sure they become part of the project. And then they can give me better insight. But when I'm sacrificing too much is when I don't see them, when I don't spend time with them. But then you can make those things up. You don't have to stop doing what you're doing. Just allocate time for them. See, because being with someone is not how much time you spend with them. It's the quality of the time. So, for example, if I'm stuck here doing this because this is what I love to do and I'm doing it for three, four, five years, I'm sacrificing a lot of things. However, when it comes to Thanksgiving, which I know is her favorite day of the holiday, favorite holiday, I'm going to go ahead and take time out and make sure that maybe I do a shorter session or right after that session, I do something extremely special for him. So you can do things like that, do special things, push a little harder towards the relationship and family and friendship. So you're not sacrificing on one or the other. You're just pushing harder in life, period. And the more you push in life, the more life rewards you. That's something that I can tell you over and over again. People are like, I've done this for so long. I'm so tired. Well, if you do it for one more day and one more time might be the one that you needed to do. And after that, it's all done. So, I mean, I hope I answered your question. You know, sacrifice, it all depends. You really don't have to sacrifice your family. You can just find other things to be able to give them better quality time so there's not a sacrifice. Well, I guess those are the questions. There's more. However, the time is up. We're looking at the time, and I wanted to keep up my commitment and make sure that I don't take more than an hour. I uh, hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed making it for you. My name is Bert Oliva. Remember to live life and don't let life live you. And I will see you next Wednesday with an interview. It's going to be powerful. And I will also see you and all the new members up in Facebook and the group. We have new things coming out there, new ideas, and even we're going to give away some stuff too. So I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much. Love you guys. 
keep making it happen. Register online and join us today for all news interviews and weekly topics only at mastermind.boa.tv.